Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing at the Madden cheese as always. Got another Madden 22 player ratings drop for you guys today. Today we have the entire secondary. Top 10 cornerbacks, top 10 safeties. Although I actually have a list of top 12 cornerbacks because there was a lot of guys tied. I found a pretty good list that went in a little bit more detail. So we're gonna have top 12 cornerbacks, top 10 safeties. And I'm also gonna introduce a new guy to the 99 club, uh, which I think is a little bit controversial, but I'll go into all that in a minute. Before I get into the video though, if you guys wanna see me uh, continue this series, whether it's you know player ratings or team ratings, all that stuff leading up to Madden uh, 22, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. And also if you think there was something on the list that was wrong or there's a player missing or out of order let me know in the comment section as well because i'm gonna give you guys my personal reaction on all this stuff uh right now so first we're gonna start off with the safeties the safeties is the one that came out the latest i was waiting to make this video based off the fact that the safeties uh just seemed to be i, I didn't know what was going on so we're gonna start off with the safeties number one we got tyron matthew uh, the safeties to me i really don't think there's like a superstar safety in the league anymore um so the highest rate of safety being a 95 that makes sense to me and tyron matthew being the number one guy that makes sense to me too this is a guy with a cornerback skill set uh, and that's one of the reasons that i think he's raised so high his man coverage is typically ridiculous on my mutt team he was one of my favorite players last year he's an absolute beast i wish he was a little bit taller he's five foot nine uh, but that ultimately doesn't make too much of a difference. Number two is Buddha Baker, another guy kind of on the short side. Um, he's not probably as good in coverage as Tyron Matthew, but he's definitely a guy that flies around and you know throws his body around. Two really good players. No real concerns at the top of the order. Number three, Devin McCourty. Here's a guy, I don't know if age is getting to him. He's still a great player, but he's a guy that probably was pushing for the top safety not too long ago. Coming in at a 92 overall um, and probably one of the best uh, coverage safeties in the game as well. Jesse Bates. Now, Here's a guy, maybe it's because he plays for the Bengals. I know, I hear his name, but I don't know enough about him. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna be happy for this guy to come at number four, because I know he's a good player, but it's just weird to hear, you know, he just doesn't get the type of recognition he deserves based on the fact that he plays on what's traditionally one of the worst franchises in the NFL. So good for him at number four. I really have no comment on whether he deserves that or not. But like I said, I'm aware, I hear his name a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna be happy for him. Uh, number five, Justin Simmons. Here's a guy a lot of times thought is one of the best safeties in the game. Um, so no real argument there. Like I said, a lot of these guys, maybe it's because they don't play on great teams. Uh, but like I think those two guys, especially that are typically on teams that really aren't haven't done too well during their career, during their stints there, uh, they just don't get the the, the hyper publicity that they probably deserve. Now number six, Jamal Adams. That's a guy. You know, he's a weird guy. He's a weird uh, prospect when it comes to safety because one of his biggest attributes is being a blitzer. Um, he's not great in coverage. Definitely a big hitter, uh, but he's definitely unique uh, safety when it comes to the NFL. I don't know how that translates to Madden ratings. Uh, being a good blitzer as a safety. Uh, Number seven, Harrison Smith, another guy I think a lot of times gets criticized for just being there based off of name recognition at this point because I don't know if he's been he's as good now as he was in the past, but he, he's always one of, the, one of the better safety profiles in the league. Uh, six foot three, um, you know, speed ratings probably dropped over the years, but he was always a, a really good safety in Madden. Uh, number eight, Eddie Jackson. Here's a guy, too. I, I think that he's one of the better safeties in the league, but he doesn't seem to, he can't seem to break that 90. Um, you know, no real issues with this list, though. Adrian Amos, number nine. Um, you got to love Adrian Amos' speed. And then Minka Fitzpatrick at number 10, uh, which is a guy who I feel like should be an above 90 player. If I were to complain about this list or if I were to, to, to move anybody, I think I'd definitely move Minka Fitzpatrick up. I think I'd probably have him, if not in the top five, I'd probably have him maybe ahead of Jamal Adams. I don't know. I just think that when he when he went to the Steelers two years ago, he completely uh, broke out. And it's weird that he, he hasn't really moved too much. But the majority of these ratings are pretty much the same that they were. Now, getting to the cornerbacks, we have a new 99 club uh, player to introduce. And that's Jalen Ramsey coming at number one. He also has a 99 overall man and a 99 overall zone. Now, I got to be honest. I, I, I am feeling Jalen Ramsey as the number one cornerback in the game. I said that in a previous video that I thought he'd be pushing for number one, but I really didn't think that he would crack the 99, especially considering that last year he ended Madden 21 as a 95 overall. It also wouldn't have surprised me if he didn't get the number one cornerback spot in the league. I mean, I know the Rams had the number one defense last year. It's going to be nuts to see a 99 overall cornerback and a 99 overall defensive uh, lineman on the same team. I mean, the pass defense is probably going to be ridiculous. It's probably, this could make the Rams one of the most used teams online or 
one of the first pick teams when it comes to CFM, having two 99 overall players on defense. And then the offense is really loaded too. I had them in my top 10 teams list. I'll have links in the description below if you guys want to check that out. Uh, but, you know, like I said, that's to me, he, he definitely, he only had one interception last year. He only has two interceptions in two years in the Rams organization. Uh, and I know that, you know, shutdown quarterbacks typically get avoided but I still think that the production isn't 100% there to have him as a 99 overall. I just I just feel like maybe he shouldn't be there. I don't know if he'll end the next season there, but he's definitely, in my opinion, he's probably the number one cornerback in the game. When I think number one cornerback in the NFL, I think of Jalen Ramsey. Number two, Stephen Gilmore. He was the last 99 overall club cornerback, and he did that coming off of the Defensive Player of the Year award. Now, obviously, Jalen Ramsey didn't win Defensive Player of the Year last year, so you can see how hard it is typically to get a 99 overall as a cornerback. He He's dropped. His last year wasn't really that great. He only had one interception last year, just like Jalen Ramsey, because once again, these type of cornerbacks typically get avoided. But Stephen Gilmore at number two, coming in at a 97 overall is definitely solid. His man coverage is a 98 and his zone coverage is a 96, so he's definitely going to be a, a monster too. Uh, both of those guys are probably going to want to throw the ball away from if you see them online. Then you get to number three, Jair Alexander. Now, this is where I start to have issue, not with the ranking, but the, the actual rating. I think Jair Alexander could be a little bit higher, maybe like a 96. I think that he really proved himself last year. Another guy only had one interception because, you know, people don't really throw their way. I'd like to see, you know, there's there's some guys down the line that have a ton of interceptions. I think should have got a little bit more respect. Uh, but definitely, I, I, I agree that he's probably the third best cornerback in, at this point, especially considering how young he is. He probably would have to do something uh, amazing to break free of that mold and jump ahead of Stephen Gilmore. Coming in at number four, it's Davis White. And it's another guy whose rating I have an issue with. The 93, I feel like his rating should be like a 94 or 95 as well. His man coverage is a 95 and his zone coverage is a 93. Then you get the Marlon Humphrey who, once again, um, this is another guy, 92 overall. I feel like it should be higher. I feel like it should be like a 94, maybe. I feel like a lot of these cornerbacks should really be closer together. I don't think that there's a huge difference between Marlon Humphrey at a 92, say, and a Jair Alexander at a 95. And Marlon Humphrey is similar to, um, you know, how I mentioned uh, with, with the safeties. This guy is known for something a little bit unique when it comes to cornerbacks, and that's forcing fumbles. He had eight forced fumbles last year, best in the NFL. Uh, one, one interception, again, but when it comes to forcing fumbles, I mean, I don't know how that would factor into Madden ratings. But I just feel like he's a little underrated here. Then I get to Xavier Howard at number six. And this is probably one of my biggest issues on the entire list. Coming in at 91 overall. This is a guy who had 10 interceptions last year. Uh, NFL best and 20 passes defensed last year and he only is getting a 91 overall this is another guy where i feel like he could easily be like a 94 or higher like i said once again there's a lot of cornerbacks where i really feel like they should be grouped closer together um, he also had seven interceptions in 2018 this is a guy's a turnover machine they tried to make up for that as far as like giving him a 97 awareness and 85 catching and 77 catch and traffic all these are best amongst cornerbacks but ultimately i still feel like his rating is pretty underwhelming when you consider the type of production that this guy has. I mean, you have to be um, a top-notch cornerback to be getting interceptions like that, especially the consistency, two times in three years. If you just add last year in 2018, he's got 17 interceptions. That's more than a lot of these guys have over the course of their entire careers. So I really don't understand that. I think that's kind of nonsense. I don't know what that guy has to do. Maybe he has to break the interceptions record to get the, uh, the recognition he deserves, but I think that's garbage. Then you go to number seven, James Bradbury, 90 overall, which I think was kind of close to what he had at the end of Madden last year um, you know really solid player obviously had a really big year with the Giants last year Pro Bowl year then tied for eighth we have Denzel Ward at 89 uh, one of the fastest cornerbacks in the game one of my personal favorites a uh, little bit of a surprising guy on the list here too with Kendall Fuller I'm not saying he won't you know he doesn't deserve to be there but it's it's surprising tied for eighth with an 89 overall I think he's probably more like an 88 or an 87 that just could be based off of name rec name recognition I mean he's a guy that doesn't have the the same type of recognition on these lists as some of these other guys then you get to three guys tied for number 10 including Darius Slay uh, who didn't have a good year in Philadelphia last year but his rating didn't drop too much he's an 88 overall Marcus Peters Another guy gets a ton of turnovers, uh, interceptions, and defensive touchdowns. Still coming in only at an 88. This guy's a multiple pro bowler. 
Uh, he's another guy. A lot of these guys I feel like are really underrated. I feel like he could be closer to a 90 or higher. Uh, and then Byron Jones, another Dolphins cornerback. So to re recap here, you got two Dolphins cornerbacks, two Baltimore Ravens cornerbacks. Obviously, those secondaries are going to be top notch. But Do Byron Jones comes in with an 88 overall. He's uh, a guy who I don't even think had a really great year last year. Um, but, you know, a lot of these guys, they get by on name recognition, which is kind of what these lists are. These are like power rankings. Uh, but that's pretty much my take. I feel like the top six guys should be a lot closer together as far as ratings because I don't think it's a lot separating them. And then I feel like, I don't really feel like anybody's missing. I don't know if Richard Sherman, you know, he was tied for fifth last year. I don't know if he had a bad year or the fact that he's not with a team is why he's not on this list. Uh, but he's a, he's a guy that I think of that could be on the list and it wouldn't upset me too much. So that's the list. Uh, top two secondary positions. Uh, let me know in the comment section if, what you guys think. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, hit the like button and hook me up with that. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.